Welcome to one of the most listened to music news podcasts in the world, SGNP, with your host, Darren Sutherland. Join us as we talk with industry leaders, artists, and entertainers about their faith, family, and careers. This is information you will not find anywhere else on radio, web, or in a magazine, but only firsthand on SGNP. Is someone you love playing a dangerous game of Russian roulette? Hey, this is Darren, and I'm going to tell you some personal information. I've got dear friends who are addicted to methamphetamines. I've got family members who overdosed from heroin and passed away. I've got relatives who suffer alcohol addiction and are alcoholics. You've heard from Russ Taft talk about his his problem with alcoholism. Addiction is a scary thing. In anywhere in the country you think about it, addiction's a big problem. Right now, the Addiction Hotline wants to help you and your family. And with the new federal Family Medical Leave Act, you can get the help you deserve. Call the Addiction Hotline today, 1-800-980-1761, 1-800-980-1761, and talk to them about the help you, your friends, or your family may need. Heck, over 43,000 people die every year from drug overdose. 88,000 people die every year from alcohol abuse. 1-800-980-1761. 1-800-980-1761. If Russ Taft can stand on stage and then later admit, hey, I've got a problem with alcoholism, you can too. Get the help you deserve, and I promise you, your heart will be so much happier for it, not to mention your family and friends. Welcome back to SGNP. Darren Sutherland here with my co-host, Arthur Rice. Arthur, how you doing, my friend? Hey, doing good. Trying to stay warm. Man, it's cold. It is cold. It was 70 degrees up in your neck of the wood on Sunday, I heard. <laughs> I and know. Then now I like that, too. I, I, I'd be happy if it would just stay that way until about April and then just warm up. Well, so, sounds but. like, I don't know if it's my headphones, it's the connection. <laughs> But you sound like you got a little bit coming through that nose, my friend. How's a how's a gospel lead singer <laughs> work being sick? I mean, you know, oh, that's just that's just allergies, you know, okay. that's just day to day, something different every day, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Arthur, this this week's a do little, the best you can. You do the best you can. This week's a little different. We may talk about a little bit of everything, a little bit of hodgepodge, a little bit of this yeah. that, and another. And we do these shows, quite frankly, ever so often. So. Uh, you know, um, we'll, we'll, we'll do that. We don't have a guest today, which is kind of unusual. So here's what we're going to do. Arthur and I are just going to ask each other questions on what we think. It's always fun to do this because we end up going down rabbit trails that we never go down. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, yeah. You, you never know what you're going to get into. That's right. That's right. First things first, okay? And let, let's let's. Uh, this is not a laughing matter. It's not a funny matter. It's a serious matter. <laughs> And all prayers and, and, and thoughts are goes out. But this week at the uh, funeral of Ernie Phillips, legendary tenor singer for the Kingsmen, yeah. a lot of us have seen the stories through social media. If you have saw the reports on SGNP's Facebook site, you know that we put a statement out that said we've heard a lot of innuendo secondhand, a lot of information secondhand on what happened with legendary Squire Parsons at that funeral. Arthur, I know you've been in personal contact with some folks and some family members and that sort of thing. Would you mind sharing what you know about that situation with Squire? And and at the same time, let's talk a little bit about Mr. Phillips and what he meant to Squire and to the world of gospel music and to the Kingsman, because yeah. you're a part of that club. And uh, let, let, let's just, let's let's go there. Well, I was trying to get an update just before the program, just to kind of give a up to the minute update on how Squire is doing. But uh, last uh, talk was uh, last night, and he's doing great. Um, he did, uh, and if you watched that 
uh, service online, you know, you you can kind of see some of that. I think they've re-edited that and kind of, which is, I think is only fair. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, Squire did collapse uh, at the uh, service and um, they uh, revived him, got him back, um, uh, back, you know, before they took him to the hospital and, uh, and he had, Several blockages. He went in for surgery uh, on Tuesday morning. He was supposed to go in Tuesday morning, and they had a couple of traumas come in. It kind of bumped his surgery up till the afternoon, and so he didn't get in a little bit later in the afternoon. But he came through the surgery. They did four bypasses, and uh, and he came through it just just great. They were concerned, you know, because the squire has been so ill lately you know with with his diabetes and and with uh, leukemia and, and he's just weak you know mm-hmm. he's just weak and so i think that that probably you know his, his heart issue with the blockage is probably added to that so i think it was you know i honestly believe it was just the lord kind of um uh, uh making that happen at the right time and and uh you know, I we, it was a miracle because he really wasn't probably wasn't strong enough to make it through the surgery. But we had so many people praying, and he's through the surgery doing well. And so we're uh, we're very um, glad and very appreciative to the Lord for being shining His light upon him. Yeah, and Squire's just a institution in, to himself, and especially to our our industry. And and uh, we need Squire here. We need his writing and his presence. And so we're so thankful that he is still here with us. No doubt. You know, we heard a lot of rumors out there when it happened. You wasn't at the service, were you? Uh, I weren't. I wasn't there. I had to. I had to work. Yeah. Uh, that Monday. Yeah. So um, uh, he. Uh, but so I. I actually kind of missed it, and right. we had a. We had a program during the service, so I didn't even get to watch it online. So I kind of, I didn't find out about it until after because I was going to watch it Monday night. And so all of a sudden I got, I was actually, I was actually at a deacon's meeting uh, and uh, I was sitting there and all of a sudden my phone just, it was in my pocket. I feel my phone just, just going crazy. People calling, texting, and I'm like, man, alive. And so I didn't, of course, I didn't really look at it until I could get a, a minute and and uh, i looked down and it was just i didn't read any of the message i was seeing where and i thought man live what's going on and so after the after my digging meeting i got out and went out to the car and looked at it and i was like oh what wow and so <laughs> then i was like well and better call around and see what's going on and so on. well you but know it's a very tense time i was on my way back from tuscaloosa alabama and uh i saw it first on facebook so i called a good friend of mine that uh, I won't reveal his name, but uh, called a good friend of mine said, that was at the service and said what was going on. And he told me, you know, basically what had happened. And then you start seeing the post on Facebook and you start seeing different things out there. Let me, this is kind of a funny question because, you know, we live in an instant date and time, you know, where everything's so instant. Let me give you a, a, an example. If something happens in your auditorium there at Dollywood during one of the Kingdom Airs concerts that is, you know, newsworthy, so to speak, or that is unexpected, that information is transferred within minutes all across the world. So here we have this funeral that going on of Ernie Phillips, Squire has a medical emergency. There he was singing at the funeral. And all of a sudden, it's transferred around the world because Squire, I mean, face it, folks, he wrote Beulah Land. I mean, he's known in the gospel music industry as a legendary performer and a legendary person like you, you talked about. Yeah. You know, there's not, our, our grand, you know, I learned my social uh, manners from my grandparents. And my mother and my dad and that, that sort of thing. Well, not my dad, but my mother. Social grace wasn't made for the internet, so to speak. You know, no, that's for sure. <laughs> so, what, what, what's what, what's your feelings on this, Arthur? So, I mean, you, you know what I'm saying? People, there was a lot of let's just face it. There was a lot of false information out there. There was, there was, and and, and so many times people are so, you know, they want to be the first to say something yeah 
you know, I was the first to know. I was the first to announce it. I was the, you know, and that's uh, so many times I, I, people kind of get irritated at me because I don't, I don't say a lot of things and, and I don't want to until I know the truth. You know, yeah. there's the truth and then there's what everybody else thinks or says. So, I, you know, there's a good and bad to that. I wish that we could, you know, put push pause before we post something or say something a lot of times and just wait till you find out what, you know, what the truth is and what's real and just pray. Yeah. That, that's the good side of it for me is the fact that we can find out this stuff very quickly and we're that quickly able to take it to the throne and just pray and ask the Lord help with that. And, and, you know, and that's how we have to leave it. We say, Lord, you, you know, you know the need. I don't know it. You know the truth and you know what needs to be done. And so if we put it in his hands, it, then we can be a help. And we, we quit being a hindrance and, and just gossip. Um, and so that's the that's the good side of, uh, I think, of, of being in the instant world of knowing what's going on. And, you know, and I, I'm not I don't say this because I'm I, I'm perfect. I, you know, we're all <laughs> we all make that mistake. Yeah. And, and we all jump to conclusions from the get go on things and. And on hearsay, and we shouldn't do that. And so I, I try to, I try to watch myself, and that because I see that so much, and and it's kind of opened my eyes to it. And so I, I do try to watch that. And I think we all should. The only secondhand information I'm willing to share that someone told me in regards to this whole thing, and it's totally edifying to Squire the man was once he was able to communicate the first thing out of his mouth was, where's my wife? How's my wife? Yeah. And that says a lot of, about the gentle giant Squire Parsons, does it not? Yeah. 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 I'll tell you something comical, too. The first thing he said to the doctor, after the doctor explained he was going to have to have surgery, and the doctor's telling him, you know, is, in, is explaining how serious the situation is and how, how it, it you know, you got a 50 50 chance here, you, you're not going to wake up, you know, that kind of thing. And Squire goes, Well, how, how long after I get this done can I sing again? <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? What that shows is what's what's great about that is not, not just his love for what he does, mm -hmm. but the fact that he's at peace to where, you know what? It doesn't matter if I wake up or not. I, it's great either way. Yeah. If I, you know, if I get through this surgery, I'll continue to do what I love to do. If I don't wake up, man, I am going home, and I have that peace, and that's what that that is what is really great about that um, uh, about that statement. It's it's not um, he wasn't worried about anything else, you know. And so um, I love that about him. Let's take a quick break. We're going to come back talk a little bit more with Arthur Rice about the great Sp Squire Parsons. We're going to talk a little bit about Ernie Phillips. We're going to talk more about the Kingsman. And we're going to tell you who our special guest next week's going to be. A whole lot of more fun right here on SGNP. Hi, I'm Karen Peck Gooch with Karen Peck and the River. And you're listening to the best in gospel music right here on SGNP. SGNP. We're reaching all across the world now. I was looking at our download numbers the other day. And Norway, Sweden, Finland. Over 2,000 people have listened to us in Ireland. And who makes that possible? My Pillow. That's right, My Pillow. And right now, My Pillow's got a great offer for you. It's buy one, get one free when you use the code SGNP. Man, don't that sound good? Buy one, get one free when you use the code SGNP. Call them today 1 800 544 8939. 1-800-544-8939. Tell them the code SGNP. Get buy one, get one free on their premium pillows. It's that simple. Thank my pillow when you're calling for supporting gospel music and SGNP. This is Josh Singletary with Tribute Quartet, and you're listening to SGNP. Welcome back once again to SGNP. Darren Sutherland and Arthur Rice here today talking about Squire Parsons, what happened this past week. The legendary Ernie Phillips, he passed away, yeah. uh, Squire, yeah. and I'm a Squire, 
Arthur, excuse me. He passed away last week. And one thing about doing a podcast that I hate, and, you know, he we interviewed, I think, Ray Dean, because we had Ray Dean on the show last week. We interviewed Ray on either Tuesday or Wednesday, or Monday or Tuesday. I can't remember what day it was. And we talked about Ernie in that, that, uh, that interview. And mm-hmm. Ray Dean said, and I quote, he was probably one of the most popular young men that ever sang with the Kingsman. And, you know, people loved him. And we released the show. And after, after we recorded Ray and before the show was released, Mr. Phillips passed. So we didn't get a chance to give him a tribute or give some information on him. I never met the man. I heard him sing numerous amounts of time. But I never personally knew him. But you personally knew him, Arthur. Yeah. Tell the folks about him. Well, I'll tell you, I, I'll be honest with you, the past couple of weeks have very, really been a very emotional uh, time for me. And um, and I think part of it is uh, is probably my age. And, you know, my dad used to say, uh, when he was my age, I would hear him say, you know, I'm getting to the point to where I've got just as many friends on the other side as I have on this side or more. And I really didn't understand what that me- what that meant. But, boy, I tell you, the older I get, the more I realize it. Yeah. Yeah, I got just as many waiting on the other side and uh, some good friends. And, you know, Les is passing. Les Beasley was, uh, and you know, and I haven't said a whole lot. I haven't posted anything about my feelings or I just, uh, it's hard for me to put into words a lot of times what people mean to me. And, uh, you know, you have people that touch you uh, uh, personally and you have people that touch your, your life and your heart and your soul. You know, Les, I grew up, it was just a, you know, he was, he came into our house, he was part of our life, you know, yeah. for so many years. When I was a kid, you know, just from the time I can remember, that was that was routine every Sunday morning to, to, to hear Les and, and all the guys sing and the different groups and that sort of thing. And, and that, it really, you know, I, I loved him because he was family. You know, he's I, I, part just like a family member you saw every week, you know. Yeah, you know what? And, if if you were like us, I mean, this is a true story. You saw Dusty Rhodes on Saturday night and Les Beasley on Sunday morning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's the truth, Arthur. Or Hee Haw, you yeah. know. Yeah, you watched. I mean, Hee Haw come on at 6 at my house. You know, yeah, at 6. And wrestling come on at 7 on 17, yep. baby. Oh, yeah. You know, and you, yeah. wasn't, you wasn't going to miss either one of them. That's right. And think about it. Roy Clark passed away the week before Les passed yep. away. Yep. Yep. So it was, the, you know, and then when Ernie, of course, Ernie has, has been, you know, sick for a long time. And, and Ernie, I thought if anybody would kick, it would be Ernie. And, and he did for a long time, you know, and it, and then it came back, cancer came back with kind of a vengeance. And, and um, Ernie was my friend before I ever sang with him. And uh, Ernie went to my home church, and, and it was a very, you know, when I was a uh, teenager, I kind of got to know Ernie, and, and um, just, you know what made Ernie the giant was his heart. Yeah. Man, he loved people. Yeah. And he loved loving on people. And that comes from loving Jesus. And uh, he was just, he just was just a great friend um uh, sorry i, I really time. haven't talked a whole lot about this and yeah um take your time buddy uh, but uh, he was a great friend and uh when you know when things were good man he was the first one to to uh be there to congratulate you when things were bad he was the first one to be there to help you it wasn't to be nosy. It wasn't to to scold you or or say you you know if you did wrong or right or whatever. He was the first one there to, with his hand out to help, and uh, he was just a great friend. And um, uh, I, I will miss. He's one of those friends, you know that that uh, you have these friends that uh, certain friends in your life that that you just. You may not see each other for a while, but as soon as you do, man, you just pick up from that point and go on, you know. And he was he was one of those friends. And it, and um, it Arthur, and, and I'm not going to get into this, but it sounds like this to me, okay? 
I know sometimes when I walk through the hardest parts of my life, God put an angel there, particularly to a friend, to help me walk through something. I'm not contending or, or, or amplifying that maybe you walk through a dark part of your life, but it sounded like er, Ernie was one of those friends that was always there when you needed him and yeah. would stand beside you. And, you know, we as people need to be friends like that to others and yeah. be an example of that. We've got a, you know, we got a lot that a, a lot of people that just need love in this world. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Absolutely, just, absolutely. Just, just need love. So, yeah. uh, I appreciate you sharing that personal story about Ernie, and uh, and and what he meant to you because uh, no doubt from what you said and what Ray Dean Reese said last week, he was a he was a great great man. He really was. And, and he, good, you good know, friend. I never heard him. I never heard him say anything bad about anybody. Yeah. Not, not one time. I mean, you know, as the, through the years, you know, things come up and you talk about people and he was always the first one to say, well, you know what? We just need to pray for him. I mean, he never said anything bad and I've never heard anybody say anything bad about Ernie either. Uh, and I, you know, I, I think Ernie <clears throat> to, to not be in the mainstream for so many years, he touched a lot of people. Yeah, and um, <clears throat> and uh, he, he touched my life and my family's life. But he loved Jesus. He loved his family, and he loved his church. What did Ernie do when he got out of the singing world? What was his? Uh, he worked at the VA hospital. Really. And uh, retired a few years ago. And of course, you know, he, he well, you know, he, he kind of worked off and on there. You know, he, he traveled with Squire for for yeah. years, and of course. You know, that was more in a church field more so than it was on the main, you know, kind of like I said, on, in the main. But he touched a lot of people. And Let, a great, great guy. Let's go back and talk about Squire a little bit for a second. Yeah. You rode the bus with Squire for a few years. Uh -huh. You were the Kingsman. You know, I've often wondered with writers like Squire Parsons or, you know, the great the great writers, Gerald Crabb, Miss Wilkerson over there, um, what goes through their mind when they write a great song or what goes through their thought process? Did you ever get any insight from Squire on what he was thinking or when he would pen a great song or were you ever around when he penned a great song and he said, what do you think of this, Arthur? I mean, any, anything like that or Gaither? I mean, you understand what I'm saying. Yes, yeah, what, absolutely. What, what, goes, what goes through their minds? I'm, I'm just curious. You know, a lot of great writers, um, you can talk to Rodney Griffin, same same kind of thing. Yeah. You know, Squire worked a lot of uh, 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 camp meetings, revivals. Yeah. Um, he was under a lot of preaching. And that inspiration will give you a lot of great songs. If you're a songwriter, it gives you ideas for songs. And Rodney will, will say the same kind of thing. Rodney's, the, you know, been the number one songwriter for the past I don't know, 15 years i think something yeah. like that and um and, and a lot of his songs come from messages from preachers and uh uh and i think squire's the same way of course squire you know he he <laughs> he'd be the first one to tell you you know he can't sing for preaching he can't preach for singing so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but 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 you know here's the difference okay this is going to sound kind of uh kind of goofy but i'm i'll just throw it out there there's a difference between a song and a standard, okay? Mm -hmm. And Squire wrote what I would term a standard in Beulah yeah. Land, okay? Yeah. Bill, Bill Gaither wrote a standard in yeah. the terms of Because He Lives, okay? Yeah. Yeah, those are those, you know, once-in-a-lifetime songs that come along. Yeah. And uh, a lot of times in... in uh, you may write some other songs. A lot of times they're overshadowed by one great song. Yeah. And same with Bill. You know, Bill's wrote some great songs <laughs> from there on out, but they were overshadowed by because he lives. And, you know, and, and I think Squire's the same way. So that Beulah Land was so big that, that it overshadowed something else that could have been just as big. If, if or we, that maybe in time. If we had Squire on the line right now, I would laugh at him about this and pick at him about this, and I know he's a great fun because he has to be great fun if you ever rode the bus with the Kingsman. 
But he wrote the most emotional gospel song that's ever been wrote. You know what song that is, don't you? Uh, Hel- the, well, there's several come to my mind, but... W- Hello, Mama. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I mean, how many times have people sang that song in little pig trail churches across the United States of America that the preacher needed them to sing that song so the altar yeah. would fill up so he yeah. could get hearts just right before yeah. he preached? Yeah, because yeah. and talk- that you know, and that song come from personal experience. You know, he wrote that about a guy that you know that he went to school with, and yeah, and it come from you know from a from a personal yeah uh, standpoint. And so, like I said, that's uh, you know where we get our greatest inspirations a lot of times. From no, no, experiences. no doubt, no doubt. Hey, next week let's get let's let's talk on a brighter note. Couple of things yeah. I wanted to bring up next week. Uh, Dennis, make sure I got his last name right. I know I've met him before. Dennis Swansburg. Dennis Swanberg, yeah. Swanberg. He's got the one swan. Of, the swan. The swan. The swan. The swan's going to be w- on with us. Yeah. Tell folks what they're going to expect from Dennis. Man, uh, Dennis, I'm telling you, he's one of the funniest guys. Of course, you know, he does impersonations and, and he can impersonate everybody. And he is uh, one of my favorite ones he does is Billy Graham. I'm telling you, he sounds just like Billy Graham. Okay. Uh, he is just a great guy. And he's been a, he's been a good friend over the years. And, and uh, uh, he, he wrote a book. Uh, called No More Secrets, and uh, a few weeks ago, we were working. We worked with him at the uh, Greater Vision Praise Fest, and uh, uh, we were kind of talking, you know. And he gave me a copy of his book, and he kind of told me a little bit about it. And I won't get into it because I want I want him to to explain it. But you know, I was kind of explaining to him about our podcast and and you know, kind of what we were kind of going. Uh, you, you know, we're, we're kind of you know we have Rust Half and. Trent Green and, uh, you know, talking about, uh, a lot of things that, that kind of happened to our lives, but we're, we, a lot of times we do, they don't come up, mm-hmm. but it's there, everybody goes through them and, uh, that we need to talk about and, uh, we need to, that we can encourage and help each other. Yeah. And I was kind of explaining, explaining that to him. And so I asked him if he'd like to be on the program and, and he graciously, um, accepted and so we're excited to have him on here next week and it's going to be a great program be you fun. gotta you gotta tune in be fun hey want to give a few things out um squire for folks a lot of folks want to know how to get in touch with us of course you of course you can always go to our facebook page southern gospel news podcast we get a ton of feedback every day we've got over nine thousand members inside of six months on this and what a great way to reach Southern Gospel fans. We've got an Instagram page that I don't even know how it works, but we've got one, believe it or not, Southern Gospel News Podcast. Our office built it. Now we've got a phone number where you can call and leave us a message, 615-763-3862. That's 615-763-3862. And before long, Arthur, we'll have technology out there where we can actually take live phone calls and uh, you can call up and ask Arthur those tough questions like, Arthur, I just love you and uh, I just want you to know that da 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 <laughs> that you've been a blessing to me and I can just sit here and say, see, Arthur, there's somebody else you blessed and I made mad. What about that? <laughs> At 615-763-3862. 615-763-3862. And coming up as we get into the Christmas season and to New Year's, you're going to have a couple of best of shows where we're going to run some excerpts from some of the most listened to shows out there. And uh, so here's some things that we were not only loved to hear, but may have been shocked to hear that you won't hear. That's the beautiful thing about this podcast, Arthur, is it's given gospel music a format to publish things that no other format gives them, be it radio or a magazine or anything like that. And here's where I, 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 and I don't get too spiritual on this, but I'm going to say this. When we started this back in April, um, people said to me, you're crazy. 52% of the world don't even know what a podcast is. And when you tell folks you do a podcast, and I tell folks I do a podcast, Remember, about 50% of them look at us and say, what's a podcast? Yeah. Still to this day. Yeah. But that 48% that have listened to a podcast, they said 
Well, they're all under 40 years old and nobody's listening, okay, above 40. Well, here's the great thing about our podcast. Number one, I know people above 40 listen to it, okay? I'm 49, so, you know, I joined that 50 club this year, 2019, coming up. Um, But I know we got a lot of young people listening to us, too. And I'm thankful for that because of what the music's all about. And the way I've always looked at it, it's all about the gospel. It ain't just about the Southern gospel. It's about the gospel. And we've had folks yeah. in the past, like Mac Powell from Third Day on here. Um, I was with David Crider not too long ago, and he told me, 2019, I'll be there. Mr. Gaither's promised us, 2019, he'll be there. So uh, we're growing. Um, Dwayne Allen has talked about being on with us, with the Oak Ridge Boys. So – I like this format, and I like what we're doing, Arthur. And quite frankly, I don't think I could do it without you, man. You you add, believe it or not, and let me say this about you. You add a a tradition of Southern gospel music that few people could do. And uh, like you said about Ernie just a second ago, and I take a lot of phone calls in this business, and I hear a lot of yaya, but I have never once heard nobody say anything bad about Arthur Rice. And that's a, that's a testimony right there, my friend. So you're well, doing you're uh, doing something uh, right out there in this world. You're doing well, something right. I thank you. You're very kind. You give me way too much credit, but uh, I just uh, I am so uh, so blessed to be a part of this uh, music that I love and this industry that I love, and and uh, I just uh, you know I, I love telling people about Jesus, yep. and um, that's the greatest job in the world. You know what I, I've often said about musicians and being a former minister of music myself. Um, we get all the love, the preachers get all the uh, pats on the backs and the oh me's. You know, we seldom get an oh me or an oh my unless we miss a note and there's a music yeah. professor in the crowd. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, we could have a lot of fun with that. Let me tell you once again, find us on Facebook, Southern Gospel News Podcast, Instagram, it's Southern Gospel News Podcast. Our website, www.southerngospelnewspodcast.com. Or you can now call us, 615-763-3862. Arthur, I got one more question for you before we get out of here today. Hey, let me let me remind people, too, also, because we're coming up on close to the end of the year. Yeah. If you need an end-of-year donation, some people are kind of looking for those things. Don't forget, sgma.org. We are a nonprofit, 5013C. Uh, you can uh, give to the SGMA, help support that. It will go a long, long way. So, uh, and I'm telling you, every dollar is used to uh, to keep that museum open. And uh, and so we, we need your help and your support coming up at the end of the year. You can get a donation. You can get a credit. You know, hey, we need all the tax credit we can get. Amen. You did uh, Giving Tuesday not too long ago. How'd that turn out for you? You know what? It turned out really good. Um, um, I've raised, I can't remember how much it is now, but but it's it's done really good. And folks are, you know, folks, folks are real good to, to give for that. And I, I'm interested to see, because, you know, they, they double that on Tuesday. And mm-hmm. so I'm interested to see what it's going to wind up uh, at the end. So sweet. Uh, but that, that was good. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Well, one last question for you before we get out of here. You ready for yes, it? Sir. Whatever uh, happened to truant officers? No, I'm teasing with you. That ain't a question. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> what, what's wrong with living right anyway? Not a thing. Not a thing. We'll talk to you soon. And Dennis Swansburg will be with us here next week on SGNP. SGNP is excited you chose to listen today. If you'd kindly leave a remark and rating in the podcast remarks section, we surely would appreciate it. Please share with a friend or family member. Look for us on Facebook, Twitter, and our new website, southerngospelnewspodcast.com. To advertise your products, services, concert event, or new project on SGNP and reach a 100% guaranteed number of people in your area, call Tim Newton at 770-874-3200 or email him today, tnewton at bgadgroup.com. Let us geotarget our ads for you, something radio nor magazine can do. Hey, this is Darren Sutherland. Before I close, I want to thank our affiliates out there, WLJA in North Georgia, KWFC in Springdale, Arkansas, 
the new one, The Andrew Burnett Show, heard all across the country and online, thelightatlanta.com, playing Southern Gospel Music online. We're adding affiliates every day. We're partnering with Ken and the folks over there at Gospel Music TV real, real soon. So we look forward to that partnership. If your gospel music entity would love to partner with SGMP, get a hold of us. It's real simple. Folks, here's the, the deal. We've reached out to literally every form of media in gospel music. If we've missed you, I'm sorry. But we've had great partnerships with folks like Paul Heil and others. If you haven't heard someone on the air, it's not because we hadn't reached out. We hope everyone is successful, no matter if they're a radio station, a magazine, a website, a group, whoever it is. God bless you, and let's make gospel music better than it was today, tomorrow. Easy enough?